All right, today is May 16, 2012, here at Affiliate Summit Central, Austin, Texas. Uh, if you found your way to the wrong hotel or room, better get out now. <laughs> the sick, weak, and easily offended should leave immediately. My name is David Faber. You can follow my uh, adventures, exploits, and irreverency by joining InsideTrackParty.com slash try. Let's, uh, let's get started here. All right, so um, the backstory for direct traffic magic. Yeah, back in uh, 2003, I went to a Dan Kennedy um, conference, and uh, he shared a little information with me, and uh, basically the numbers are that uh, he was generating uh, thirty thousand dollars per thousand people per week on his list, and my list was generating three hundred dollars per thousand people per week. I ran these numbers, and Direct Traffic Magic was born. I figure I better fire those people and get some more. Anyway, uh, what's Direct Traffic? Technically, um, in your Google Analytics, Direct Traffic has no referring link. Um, practically, <coughs> it's uh, conversation. Uh, which has been amplified, bona fide, and buzzified. Amplified uh, uh, means that um, you're using content strategies and technologies to uh, uh, be louder, reach more people. Bonafide means that you're authentic and valuable to your tribe, your audience. Buzzified means that um, uh, your tribe is going to buzz about you and your product. All right, direct traffic sources. Uh, first source is ad cloaking, and we're going to skip that one. Email embedded links, in other words, if you get an email and you click on that link, uh, there's no referring uh, website, so that's also uh, direct traffic. And there's also browser bar input. So, uh, for example, one of my sites, RadicalHealth.com, 60% of the traffic is people typing in RadicalHealth.com. Um, that's direct traffic. So our focus is going to be browser bar input, uh, primarily from brand traction. In other words, you're going to ingrain your brand in people's uh, mind. You're going you're gonna to own their, the mind share around your uh, topic or category or niche and stay top of mind. All right, so rumor. A um, little note about uh, direct traffic is uh, two kinds of direct traffic, real and fake. Uh, fake traffic is uh, you know a million hits in 30 seconds from a Class C network, in other words, a span of IP addresses uh, in the Philippines, Indonesia, India, South Africa, wherever. Real traffic is, um, uh, you know, a million hits spread over uh, 30 or 60 or 90 days, which are coming from all sorts of different um, uh, IP addresses in the U.S. Also, uh, bounce rate fi figures into this uh, bounce rate, which will maybe go into another time is um, how long a person stays on your uh, page. If they're, you know, stay on your page five seconds, that's going to be a hundred percent bounce. If they're staying on your page for a half hour, an hour or two, um, or navigating between pages, that's real traffic. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about bounce rate in another um, uh, conversation another day. All right, what's exciting about direct traffic? First thing is mindshare management. Um, with Tribal Buzz, you can uh, hold mindshare by staying top of mind. Uh, optimal buyer cash flow. Uh, in other words, the uh, highest uh, uh, price per sale and uh, most repetitious sales. And you also escape the SEO shell game. All right, mindshare management. Let's talk about that first, Tribal Buzz. Uh, this is how to attract, capture, and keep top of mind. It also has the side effect of uh, cloaking your gravity well or marketing funnel or money flow, however you um, attract traffic and convert that into uh, sales. Now, th now, this is great for baffling your uh, competitors for low or no competition. <laughs> All right, optimal buyer cash flow. Um, the ultimate uh, cash flow feedback loop uh, is uh, where you've got... Um, your tribe buzzing about you because tribal buzz creates repurchase persistence and repurchase persistence then creates more tribal buzz so the two feed each other uh, buzz and um, uh, not forced continuity but um, we'll call it stealth continuity 
fact, that's a good um, uh, topic for another day, too, is uh, stealth continuity. SEO shell game. Now, here's the way most people run their business, which is dumb as a bag of hammer. That's what we say in the country. I grew up in the woods. Um, uh, this is how most people do it. They determine working SEO. They tool their entire business around it, all their content generation, their community interaction, everything around whatever is working today. Well, then the spammers figure out how to exploit it. Google does an algo change and uh, knocks everybody out, uh, spammers and you. Your money zeroes and you start all over again. <laughs> oh, Lord, if I had to do that, I, no, that's bad. Uh, direct traffic side effects. All right, to Google, direct ca uh, traffic indicates true value. In other words, if somebody's typing in your domain in the browser bar and it's real direct traffic, you spread out across lots of IPs in uh, first world nations, uh, with uh, low, low pa uh, page bounce, bounce rates. In other words, people on page for long periods of time. That's true value. So um, what you get as a side effect is uh, you get Google pay-per-click slap abortion. Uh, no more slaps out of the uh, Google AdWords uh, index. Uh, you also get Google natural search index drop abortion. Um, you know, getting a PPC slap is one thing. Getting your website completely removed from Google's index is very bad. Uh, you pretty much just have to doze that, um, uh, that domain under and start again. Uh, Google algo change friendly. So in other words, every time Google's algorithm changes, um, my sites go up. So it don't matter, uh, you know, it's live post uh, Panda Penguin and uh, Penelope or whatever they call the next version. Uh, whatever Google calls their next algo change. Um, whatever Google does, it makes no difference to me. It always makes my site's natural search results go up. That's what you're after. And also, it's Google human uh, reviewer friendly. Now, a lot of people don't realize Google's got a lot of human reviewers working now. And so, um, if you think you're, um, if you think you're somehow gaming the system by having a bunch of people write uh, stupid uh, three or four or five hundred word uh, you know news or video curation blurbs on a site as a SEO bait you know when a Google human reviewer comes across that and sees what you're doing uh, you're out. Alright direct traffic excels at tribe building three types of buyers each has its pros and cons. Uh, you got to design and choose your buyers well so here we go. Uh, first type of buyer, uh, well, the first, uh, first off, the three types are uh, customers, clients, and kin, or tribe. So first time, uh, uh, first one is customers, which are one night stands. They're price entry, burn hours of your time and gallons of gas, or they burn hours of their time and gallons of gas to save a dollar, which in the event is gonna burn all your time. This is good, they're good for fast cash, um, but it's low profit, small ticket items. Uh, they're single sales usually, no repeat sales, or very few, and a very high return rate. All in all, the worst of all kind of buyers you can have. Clients are more like uh, courtships. Uh, they're value-centric. Uh, they'll use you to curate value to save their time. Slower cash, higher profit, medium to large ticket sales, lots of repeat sales, very low return rate. In fact, in our superfood business um, that we run under Radical Health and Sunfire Superfoods, we have about uh, maybe a return every six to eight months, something like that. And uh, that's been steady for almost uh, 10 years now, coming up on uh, running that business. All right, uh, Ken or Tribe, these are marriages, these are joint venture partners. Uh, they're high profit centric. Uh, you get all the client perks, plus you get long cycle persistent cash flows that escalate exponentially uh, by way of parallel sales. So here's what I mean by parallel sales. Let's say if you've got a, a list that's generating, uh, I don't know, a sale every week per 100 people on your list, uh, then um, if your list is a uh, 1,000 people, if you go and find somebody that um, has a uh, list of 10,000 people that uh, was created in a similar way that, created, that you created your list. In other words, the uh, people on that list, the buyers on that list are disposed to or interested or excited about uh, purchasing what you have to offer, then if their list is 10 times your list, your sales just went up 10x per week. So that's what I mean by parallel sales. 
All right, uh, direct traffic design guide. Um, how do you do it? So first off, uh, gnosis, Greek word for know thyself. Uh, know your true calling. Uh, we're gonna cover a little bit more of this and we're gonna go through a little, um, what I call a destiny design guide and then a, a content design template for both writing and speaking. All right, a message design template. Now, now listen to this really carefully. I'm gonna say it twice. What you say, how you say what you say, how long and how often you say it determine the speed and magnitude of your outcome. I'm going to say it again. What you say, how you say what you say, how long and how often you say it determine the speed and magnitude of your outcome. Accelerants. Accelerants are time, technology, and money. Accelerants only speed up destiny. In other words, you throw gasoline on the fire, the fire gets big, and the gasoline goes away. So, accelerants will never determine destiny. In other words, you can't throw enough time, technology, and money at something that's stupid and broken to begin with because it's just gonna um, you know, fizzle out or burn up or collapse faster than if it had no time, technology, and money put into it. All right, so um, here's a content design checklist. Um, and actually, um, I'm going to do a, uh, uh, another video about uh, ADA, A-I-D-A, the sort of the content generation formula that um, many of us use. And I'm going to map that to the brain, uh, which would be Broca's area, Wernicke, and a prefrontal cortex. So uh, be sure and uh, check out Inside Track Party for uh, when that uh, publishes. So a content design checklist. First off, make sure that your content is brain candy. It's unique, entertaining, edutaining. In other words, it's educational and entertaining, and it's actionable. Make sure it's tribe relevant. It's got to be narrow, uh, meaning it's on one topic, concise, meaning that all the cruft and fluff is stripped out. It's got to be psychoactive. In other words, your content, um, if you'd like it to, to have gravity and stickiness in people's minds, you've got to change your reader's state. They've got to have an internal state change. Uh, implementation. Um, now, your, your content design workflows have got to require very little time, money, energy, and expertise. So, um, well, your workflows do. And also, the, the content you're providing to your audience also, whatever you are uh, providing for them uh, in the form of brain candy, in other words, it's actionable, for them to take action and uh, execute and impl uh, implement what you've shared requires on their part very little time, money, and energy, and expertise. So here's the way you do this. You do it in um, the form of uh, incremental outcomes. So you give a person a small action to take that produces a large outcome. And uh, I'd suggest you uh, take uh, Neville Medora's um, uh, suggestion and, uh, that he talks about a lot in his courses is, uh, you know, give a person at least a uh, 100 to 1,000 percent return on their investment over a 12-month period. If I prefer 1,000 percent. 100 percent is absolute minimum. Um, and, you know, if you can't provide somebody a 100 percent return, and actually if you, if you chunk that down a 1,000 percent over a year, you can actually divide that by 12. It comes out to about 100 percent per month. So that means if somebody invests $1,000 with you for a course, at the end of a 30-day period, they better get $2,000 worth of money in their pocket. If you can do that for your clients, uh, they will just keep coming back and jump up and down with their wallets upside down and open, shaking money out. All right, uh, practical direct traffic channels, uh, classified ads. Um, if you place classified ads with um, uh, you know, really great brain candy content, which drives people to pick up some resource, uh, some free resource at a website, people are going to be typing in your website because there ain't no links that go between physical print ad, uh, print classified ads and websites. People got to read it and, you know, remember it and carry it with them or cut it out and go type it in. Now, the, it gets really important here to have a domain that you can spell. If you got a domain that's supercalifragilisticexpialidocious.com, uh, the, the likelihood of somebody reading that in a classified ad and clicking through is going to be tough. If, on the other hand, you've got something like Radical Health, or Sunfire Superfoods, or Wetware Hacking, 
simple things that uh, simple domains that people can remember that lodge in their brains. Um, that's what you're after. Uh, refrigerator magnets and uh, laminated how-to guides for top of mind are fantastic. Refrigerator magnets uh, really rock uh, because they're in front of people all the time every time they walk to the refrigerator. Uh, really great for uh, things that relate to uh, home repairs, uh, anything that has to do with the home, uh, weight loss stuff, health stuff. Uh, laminated uh, how-to guides are great for uh, marketing and business, especially if you do like a long 11 by 14 or 8 by 10, something that's going to be sitting on somebody's desk that they're going to use all the time. Uh, con conversations and networking introductions. Um, I'll do a, um, uh, another piece of content about audio logos, uh, which are uh, great to use at network introductions that uh, will keep top of mind. They'll grab mind share and keep it. Uh, radio, television, podcast, spots, and interviews. In other words, anytime you have a conversation in front of a group of people, whether you're speaking, um, you know, with a, um, uh, a guest interviewing you or having a conversation or you're talking in front of a group, again, go back to the domain name. Uh, make sure that your domain name is e easily reproducible so when people hear it, if they, um, uh, if they've if they've got a piece of paper and can write it down, great. But what you're looking for is if they have no paper and they have no pen, no recorder, all they've got is their neurology that you stick your domain in their name and they remember long enough to when they get to a computer they can uh, take some action. Uh, other practical uh, direct traffic channels are physical books, ebooks, and print magazines. Oh, here's a good one. Leveraged video theft. I threw this in because it's a really interesting uh, practical direct traffic channel very few people use. Um, everybody's always trying to figure out how to protect their videos from being stolen. I think that's just stupid. Um, if you think that you are smarter than people stealing your videos, you're wrong. Um, so here's what I do. I always plan on every piece of content I generate being stolen. I make it easy for people. I publish it in a way where it's really easy to steal and a lot of times I'll even give download links. But what I do is I watermark the video with uh, a website. Again, it's got to be a simple, easy to remember website like Inside Track Party or Radical Health, Wetware Hacking, something like that. Uh, then I set up a Google alert camped on that term. And then when uh, people steal my video and embed it in uh, what are called money sites, in other words, like uh, the most stolen video I've got is a review I did about Who Wrong Slow Juicer. And so people are always stealing that and putting it up on money sites, where, which are single page sites that are, you know, SEO bait that drive people to buy Hooram juicers on Amazon. Well, what I do is every time a new one of these sites pops up uh, related to Hooram or Slow Juicer or a couple of other related keywords uh, like uh, Omega VRT, which is the same juicer, um, what happens is I get a, a Google alert that says a new page appeared. I go and check that page. If it is a uh, stolen copy of my video, or uh, stolen, uh, a website which has, an embedded, has my video embedded and is using it to drive traffic to Amazon so they get paid, most of these sites have a facility for adding comments. Now, if you go in those blog comments and you put in a link like uh, http colon colon and radicalhealth.com, then usually that, um, that link in there gets thrown into a review state. In other words, if you put a link in a post, it usually um, is flagged for review before it posts. If on the other hand, you use uh, obfuscated uh, blog comments, which means you put in something like radicalhealth.com without the http colon slash slash or you say radical space health space square bracket dot square bracket space com in other words radicalhealth.com obfuscated means that it's um, uh, written where humans can understand it and uh, bots or spiders or web crawlers um, are unable to decipher it now if you use an obfuscated blog comment what do people have to do? <laughs> they read it, you know, if they read, they go to the site and they find my video and it says, you know, if you'd like more information about who wrong juicers and recipes or whatever, go to radical space, health space, square bracket, DOT, close square bracket, space, com. They have to type in radicalhealth.com 
in their browser bar. So that's another uh, fantastic direct traffic channel. All right, a meetup.com special event, uh, example. Uh, meetup.com is the uh, most underused technology on the, the web right now. And in fact, if you go to Inside Track Party, my, uh, uh, the YouTube channel, which is uh, insidetrackparty.com slash videos, then um, you'll find a couple of videos about um, uh, creating um, meetup groups. Let's see, I think it's called uh, uh, Meetup Group uh, Construction Kit is one of them and the other one is uh, um, optimizing uh, orphaned meetup groups. Um, if you go through both those uh, videos, they're really long. Um, they're both an um, hour and a half to two hours. If you go through both those, you'll get a great uh, overview of the uh, ADA uh, copywriting formula and how to set up meetup groups, also how to take over orphan groups whenever a meetup organizer steps down. Imagine a meetup organizer that's been running a group for 10 years that steps down and there's 2,000 members on that group and that group goes up for grabs. Anyone can take it over. You think it'd be good to have a couple of thousand uh, you know, highly focused people that have been showing up to physical meetups around your topic or niche or category. I think that'd be good. So, meetup.com helps you cut through the noise. Uh, it allows you accessing highly qualified, pre-focused groups. Um, the big name of the game in any kind of uh, joint venture or marketing proposition is um, to cut through noise. And if you can get a room of people, 20 or 30 even people together, and you can have a conversation with them, you have their undivided attention or you have their complete uh, focused attention. So cutting through noise is essential to creating a long-term uh, seven, eight, and nine-figure income. Um, also, uh, Meetup allows you to practice your craft, both writing and speaking, for um, you know basically zero dollars. It allows rapid tribe building uh, to attract, capture, and keep kin. Now. Tribe building is different than building mailing lists. So here's the thing that happens with me. I get invited to a lot of backroom SEO mastermind sort of things where, you know, it's, you know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, the group of old great wizards get together to talk about really what they get together to talk about is what ain't working and how to save their buns because of the last uh, Google algorithm change. That's really what happens here um, about over the last year especially with Panda because Panda is a rolling update. In other words, Panda didn't happen in February of 2011 and stop in February 2011. It happens every month. Uh, Panda is an adaptive uh, algorithm change that uh, ensures more and more crappy content gets dumped off the web. So what's left is uh, increasing valuable content. So uh, Meetup allows you to do rapid tribe building of kin uh, which are different, um, back to the smoky backroom um, sort of masterminds and uh, think tanks. A lot of people talk about their lists, you know, they've got these big lists, a uh, quarter million people or whatever, a million people. And my question is, how many people off that list bought in the last 30 days? Most guys glaze over. Uh, or worse, um, uh, the numbers are easily ascertainable. Um, I had a guy here in, um, uh, that came to visit uh, my office uh, a few months ago. And I got really good hearing and I walked out of the, the room and uh, heard him on the phone and he's talking to his tech guy and they'd sent out an email to a quarter million people 24 hours later and they generated $400 sales. And I figured based on the email service that I knew he was using that he paid about $4,000 to send that email out and he made $400. That's a bad day. Uh, so. Uh, kin are people that uh, uh, will pretty much buy anything that you uh, suggest. Clients are the same way. Customers are like the big unwashed masses on a list that uh, may or may not do anything. And again, remember there are small price points and have high return rates. All right, Meetup 101. There's kind of three phases of how to use Meetup.com. Uh, phase one is you attend Meetups. You know, go and look for meetup groups related to your topic category niche. You attend, you build relationships with the organizers and attendees. Phase two is you speak at meetups. 
So you leverage your phase one relationships into speaking engagements. Um, uh, a great way to do this, especially with organizers, is you say, um, hey, I uh, love your group. Um, I do a lot of speaking about a similar topic. Why don't you add me to your backup speakers list? And they'll glaze over because uh, most people ain't ever heard of the backup speaker list, so you tell them what it is. Uh, when they start glazing over, you say, you know, your backup speaker list, the list of people that you, uh, you know, keep their cell phone numbers or phone numbers and Skype IDs handy. So if you have a speaker cancel 15 minutes before they're supposed to go on in front of a few hundred people, then you got somebody to call to say, hey, dude, can you show up? And if I'm in town, I'll show up and speak on a moment's notice. Or uh, if it's uh, somebody that's got a, a virtual type of um, event going on like a uh, teleconference or a webinar, I, I, it, it would be challenging for me to think of uh, or to uh, come up with a number of all the times I've gotten this uh, frantic call, you know, in the middle of the night saying, hey dude, I've got, you know, 2,000 people coming on a webinar in five minutes and my speaker's AWOL. Can you talk about something? Well, I can do better than that. Tell me what your topic is and I'll talk about that. So that's phase two. Uh, phase three is you organize your own groups. Um, I, I highly recommend uh, you go and join InsideTrackParty.com slash tribe and you know, follow how we um, do our marketing and how we do our events, both uh, uh, local, national, global, physical events and virtual events. Now, a little side note here is Meetup hates virtual events, so um, you know, go through my um, uh, Meetup uh, group construction kit and it talks about how to get around all that. All right, additional resources. So well, if you have any questions, uh, be in touch. Join Inside Track Party right now to again, you know, track or follow my adventures, exploits, and irreverency. Um, and uh, we're, phew, man, right up to the wall on our time for questions. So if you've got questions, just uh, meet me afterwards. Enjoy. Enjoy.